How's it going guys? And welcome back to another JHR review. And today we're going to be looking at something kind of simple, but I thought was really cute. And I actually want to give it to my fiance because she has kind of a pink kind of computer setup going on right now. And this is just a simple kind of ice cream cone shaped fan to kind of cool yourself during the summer. And it's really cute. So when you're holding it like this, it's like you're actually holding like an ice cream cone. So basically um, on the back right here, we have a little notch that you can undo. So it takes two AAA batteries and I have some right here. So let's go ahead and load in one. And then let's go ahead and load in the other one. There we go. And then let's just attach this cover back here. I like how the lines actually still line up because sometimes when they have the little back covers, the lines don't match up. But these are actually pretty much perfect. And then it'd probably be a good idea to remove this guy right here because when it spins, it's gonna drag the tag. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, I went ahead and removed the little tag. And now on the side, we have a discreet button that allows you to just go. And that's actually pretty nice. The airflow on that's actually really nice. Let's go ahead and zoom on it a little bit farther away though, so we can kind of get the whole look. I really like the waffling on the cone. I just, uh, I don't know, it just, it looks really nice. And I like how the plastic actually like, lifts up and has like an edge, but it's not like rigid or anything. So it's like an actual ice cream cone, and I wonder if it ever would fool anybody if you held it far away, if they'd realize that this was a fan or not, if it was like that direction, kind of like that. Let's go ahead and turn on the fan again and see how much wind we can get out of this. Pretty decent amount of air. I wonder if there's something around here that I can show you. Here we go. Let's go ahead and grab this uh, paper towel. All right. And go. Oh. And off. And on. Yeah, so it gives a pretty decent amount of air off of here and uh, I don't know, I just, I find this really cute and really interesting and, you know, it's not often that you see a ice cream cone fan. So I thought I'd show you guys because I thought it's an interesting product and I like showing stuff like this off to you guys that I find interesting and kind of hard to come by. But yeah, what do you guys think? Interesting little idea? Would it be something that you'd use at the beach or something? Let me know in the comments below. And today we're going to be looking at something that is going to be a little bit confusing for me because I can't read it, but we are going to attempt to make this microwave make your own chocolate kit by uh, Heart, I believe. If we turn it around on the back, you can see that there is a little bit of a diagram if we zoom in about microwaving your chocolate in a mug, stirring it, and then I guess you fill the molds up that are inside of here. I think we have to freeze it for just a tiny bit of time in order for it to solidify. But um, it's very interesting and I'm really excited to kind of try it out. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we can do. All right, let's slide everything out. Oh, okay, I see. So basically what we're gonna do is we have two of these little guys right here and let's open them up so I can give you a good visual representation. Let's see. So right over here, I don't know what this one is. It's probably something important though. We'll get back to that later. Right here we have these little tiny areas in here where we're going to lay down these guys, just like this. And that's before we put the chocolate on but we use these dots to fill in these little kind of little crevices right here. If we go ahead and, yeah, these little tiny little holes, imprints, we're gonna go ahead and fill those with those beads and make some designs. And then after that, um, once we are done with this, I'm gonna take this thing of chocolate right here, 
And we're going to nuke that for probably 30 seconds. And then we're going to get it nice and liquidy. And then we're going to pour it inside of the mold and try to make some kind of like, I don't know, uh, I guess lollipop of some sort. But I'm not really sure what uh, flavor these guys are. Not sure if there's a specific flavor or not. So I'm excited to see what these taste like. And then excited to see what we can get to come out of this. So go ahead and stay tuned. So first thing we need to do is open one of these guys. And I'm going to go ahead and try one out before we put it in to see if it has any flavor or if it's just like a sugar kind of uh, base. Actually, I was completely wrong. These are just shells with little tiny bits of chocolate inside. So let's go ahead and pour some of these in here. We don't want to do too many because we want to be able to get some sort of design. I'm probably not going to be able to create the most intricate design. Sorry, my hand's blocking the way. But we can try to get like at least a, maybe some separation in here. Maybe some halvesies. Oh, that's kind of cool. There we go. They kind of jump around quite a bit. Yeah. Kind of hard to maneuver. We'd have to have like tweezers or something. So maybe this is like a some kind of like little clouds or something, I'm not too sure. And we can throw some of these white ones in there too. Maybe like a blue and white one. Try to put them mostly on this area. Maybe we can put like a center of a different color, like maybe like a red. We'll see what we can do. Some of these guys don't have homes yet though, so we gotta pop them around. Oh, I guess that's okay. There we go. And I think a red would look nice in the middle. I don't know if you're supposed to fill it all the way up, but there's a lot of these balls, so you might as well try to... That might be it. Yeah, one, two, oh, there's one more. One more, right? There. And yeah, that one already, these two have homes already. Come on. There we go. So that's completely done. Kind of looks, uh, well, it's red, white, and blue, so... <laughs> All right, and then this one, let's do uh, some yellows. You can try to do like a fire or something. That would be cool. Don't know if I have the skill for that though. Let's do around the edges. You know, when you're trying to think about it, I'm just like, does fire have the yellow on the outside or the inside? I don't remember. Like traditional, like cartoon fire. Let's see. Gotta kind of get these to jump around until they find their little homes. Guess I can roll it around a little bit. There we go. Okay, cool. Well, nope, two of them. Come on, guys. Come. On. There we go. Oh, almost. But now we're knocking these guys out too. Almost there. Perfect. And now. I'm gonna fill it with this red. Kinda looks like a superhero symbol or something. Let's see if we can get that in there. Like the flash, like the reverse flash. Actually, it looks a lot like the reverse flash. <laughs> I'll just eat these guys if I can't get them out. If I can even pick them up. You're gone. And you're gone. I might just leave these guys at the bottom though if I can't get them out easy. Alright, we have successfully made this into a design. I like this one better than I like this one, but I think they're both pretty cool, so... Let's lay our little sticks down right here. Just like that. I might actually want to put something on the ends to actually prop them up. Maybe that's what this is. I'm not too sure. It's kind of hard to tell what this is. What do you guys think that is? Some kind of grabber? <gasps> oh, I'm so dumb. This was the grabber, the, exactly what it was. Let's pour one of these out of here. This whole time. I want to pick one up, I just gotta do that. Oh, well, that's gone. 
Well, it works in theory. I didn't grab it properly. Let's try one more time. So we have one little guy right here. We have these two little holes. So we grab it like that. Perfect. I can't believe I didn't realize that. Maybe I'll just throw some random thing in the middle right there. It's so precise though, and if I wanted to pick that up, so easy. I can't believe I didn't realize I'm gonna eat it. Oh well, that's okay though. We can just eat these later too, these little um, chocolate balls. But without further ado, let's open this guy, see what it looks like, and then pop it in the microwave. All right, so we have the chocolate bar right here, and it looks pretty much just like regular chocolate. I'm gonna try a little bit before I melt it. Yeah, pretty decent, not too bad. I think it'll go really good with this, so let's go ahead and heat it up. All right, so I went ahead and melted this chocolate up, so let's try to get this out of here as soon as possible. So we don't want this to, uh... oh, there we go. And completely surround and fill it up. Almost there, and stop. And then let's try to get as much as we can out of this one too. Because this one's going to be a little bit harder because a lot of this wants to stick to the bottom. And then we're definitely going to have to reposition those sticks to where it'll uh, do the right thing. Because it's not going to solidify in there in the freezer if they're not submerged in the chocolate. Yeah, it's giving me a little bit of trouble down here. But I think I'll be able to get most of it out. I should have got like a spoon or something instead. That's alright though if one's a little bit lacking of the chocolate. I was trying not to get it on my setup, but luckily my setup, I found a good solution made out of a uh, kind of wallpaper that you can get and you just tape it to the desk versus um, the cardboard back panels I was getting before that stained really easily. This I can just roll off a new piece and it'll look exactly the same, which is really nice and convenient. So I did lose quite a bit of chocolate in there, but I was very uh, generous on this side, so that's probably why I didn't have enough. But let's go ahead and put this inside of the freezer and see what we kind of get at the end. All right, I went ahead and I took them outside of the freezer and they're pretty solid as well. But I think the biggest question is how do we get it out of this mold? If we look on this side, you can see that it actually uh, worked pretty well. If we zoom in right there, you can see the uh, design that we created. The chocolate did kind of overlap the balls a little bit, which I'm not extremely happy about. Because if you see right here, it kind of takes away from the design if it's wrapped in uh, chocolate. But let's go ahead and turn it back this way and see if we can maybe push from the other side to get it to come out. Oh no, it already is cracking in half, guys. That sucks. That's all right, though. As long as we can get something out of here, right? Oh man, the uh, chocolate doesn't seem to have the same amount of dexterity as it did before it was melted. Well, that sucks. Let's move that out of the way. So, basically what we're working with now is stuck in chocolate in a mold. And I'm pretty sure I left it in there long enough, too. Um, I mean, you know, when I touch it, yeah, it gets melty, but that's just from the heat of my hands. Let's see if we can pop this one out over here. And it's on the floor. So I wasn't able to get anything out of this one, but this one right here has a lot of cool little uh, design on there, and it actually kept on pretty well. The chocolate's pretty melty still, but let's go ahead and take a bite before it all falls apart. Mmm. That's pretty good. Not gonna lie. It's actually really good. Going to lay this back in here. Yeah, that is not bad at all. The chocolate didn't lose any of its like taste when it was melted down in the microwave. There's no weird aftertaste. All of the balls that are in there are still just as good as when I ate them by themselves. And it's kind of like eating a Hershey's bar mixed with M&Ms is probably what I would uh, equivalent it to. But it's really good stuff and I definitely would suggest buying this one just as long as you separate the chocolates evenly 
and you make sure that you get those sticks in there more properly. Surprisingly, the one that had the stick in it better is the one that didn't work, but the one that it was kind of floating halfway out ended up working the best. So yeah. And today is a little bit of a short video, but I really didn't want to pass up this solar-powered swinging lucky cat. And you've probably seen a lot of different versions of these. But this is the Daiso version, and it is the white cat. And you've probably noticed I really like cats, most of you who've been following me for a while. So it's no surprise that I found a cute little kind of money coin cat right here. And uh, I'm really happy because I'm going to put it in my fiance's car on the little kind of dash so it can do that and maybe bring some good luck. But let's go ahead and open it up so we can take a closer look at it. Comes out of the encasing pretty easily. Has a little tiny instruction booklet. And then it also has, if we zoom in real quick. It looks like a double stick sticky pad, so you could definitely put that on something that's moving. It's like the inside of your car. And let's go ahead and zoom in on the face. Look how cute this guy is. And even though I don't have it like in direct sunlight, the arm is still moving, which is really cute. I'll move around the back side. You can see the shape of the cat. He has a little, uh, patch right there. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then the cat is wearing a red collar. And then I'm not sure what the symbol in the middle means. So if you guys could let me know in the comments below, that would be awesome. I'm not 100% sure what that is. But yeah, I really like this and I think it's really cute. And it'd be really easy to just throw on this little kind of sticky pad at the bottom right here, which actually lines up with all these circles pretty well too, so you can put it relatively directly in the center. That's kind of a nice little feature. And then just stick it on your dash, and then you have something really cute to look at while you're driving. Well, I mean, not while you're driving, but maybe at a stoplight. Something kind of cute. Make your car feel a little bit more, uh, I don't know, inviting. But yeah. And today, we're going to be looking at some cat gotchas. We don't have just one, but we actually have two different cat gotchas right here. And basically on here, if we zoom in, it's kind of like a gamble between all of these different little sticker booklets down here. I also think that it might also have a poster of a kitten on here, but I'm not too sure. I'm also not sure if it comes with any like candy or anything. I feel like there might be actually a stick of gum right here. So it might be similar to the Dragon Ball Super ones that I actually undid or unboxed or technically unwrapped. So right here on the back, it shows a good example of what you can use these guys for. You could put it on a pencil case. You could put them on the back of like a little notebook. Or if you have one of those thermal uh, kind of flask things, the the big ones, um, you can get at Costco, you could even put that on there too. And then I'm not sure, it looks like he's snickering about something. And then it does look like it has something on the inside, which I believe is the gum, which also has 2.7 carbohydrates and sugar glucose, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, gum base, and citric acid. So yeah, it is. And it has the same stuff down here on Japanese, or in Japanese. And let's go ahead and zoom back out on that. So we have this one, and then we have the other one. So let's go ahead and undo this one first. And... Ooh! They're actually glittery, I had no idea. Whoa, look at that. That is an insane amount of glitter. That is so cool. Let's move these out of the way. Look at it between like my LEDs and stuff. Let's go ahead and zoom in. See if we can get a good focus. So this is like normal, right? No glitter. And then... There's just so much glitter on there. Let's zoom in. Look at this. It's like, a, it's like a disco scene or something. That is so cool. 
I like that guy. He's doing a loaf. There's a little kitten playing. This guy's just kind of standing. Cute little cat kind of face cut out. And then we got this beautiful kind of looking girl over here. I'm assuming that's a girl. And then we have this jumping kitten right here. And kind of like a little like birdie designs and stuff. Oh, we can't forget this one right here. Kind of looks like he's like has little teary eyes or something. And then we also have the brand as well. Let me zoom out a little bit. That glitter is just so, so intense though. I wasn't expecting it to be so like intense. It's, it's really interesting too, because like, if you do like small movements, it kind of looks like they're like little LEDs. That's really cool. I wonder what I should put this on. What do you guys think I should put this on? I should put a sticker on something that I frequently use, but what should I put it on? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think I should put this on? All right, so that is the first one. And now let's hope that we get some other cats in the next gotcha right here. Let's push those out of the way a little bit. I'm gonna leave this there for comparison. And then we also have the gum as well. Let's not forget about that. And now let's unload it. And we have different cats. Let's zoom in on it. So here's the first one right here. Do we have any duplicates? Not that I immediately see. Yeah, no, it's a brand new one. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So we have the, I'm gonna call him the laser dot looking cat. We have a kind of scared or skittish looking cat, a loaf cat, a pounce cat, a give me food cat. We have a watching eye cat. Same one. <laughs> we have a cute cat face. Then we also have this uh, kind of roaming cat. Look at this cat's tail is huge. And then two really cute black kitties. But yeah, no, these are actually really nice. And I wasn't expecting them to kind of glitter so much. I think this will look really cool on my fiance's kind of um, thermal kind of drink bottle that she brings um, that she got at Costco. Lots of space for uh, stickers. But yeah, what do you guys think? Something that uh, you'd pick up for yourself? Something you think would drag people's attention in? Let me know in the comments below. And today I have two packs of iWaco erasers, but instead of giving away which ones that I'm going to get in the pack, I'm going to move them to the side for right now. But I have quite a few erasers that I picked up this last uh, few weeks, and I want to show you guys some of the ones that I got. So without further ado, let's unbox these, and I have a little bit of a top down today. So I'm going to show you guys real close a lot of the cool erasers that I got. All right, let's move this over here. So this one comes on a little tiny kind of cookie tray. And it's interesting because I had one many, many, many videos ago that also came on a tray. And it's kind of cool that I finally got one that comes with that again. Let's go ahead and look at the first one. This one right here kind of has like a kind of cream in the center it's probably some kind of, uh, what are they called? Kind of like a, pu a puff pastry kind of thing. And then it has some kind of green top. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, it could just be like a standard icing, or it could be something else. But yeah, I'm not too sure about the green stuff, but uh, it also comes apart into four different pieces as well. So that's pretty cool. Didn't expect it because it had such a small little area over here. I almost thought it was connected into one. Let's move that to the side. And zoom back in. Alright, and then we have the one next to it. We have the same kind of, you know, little puff pastry kind of thing. But this time we have a green top instead. 
It's kind of interesting if you move these side to side. They do technically use the same mold for the toppings of these. So, and of course it comes apart in four different pieces. Bringing one of these in, this is just kind of like a simple kind of, um, what, they, what would they call these? Madelines, I think? Yeah, I think this would be a Madeline cookie. And this is just one solid piece, which I'm not used to seeing. You can see they have some details in the breading, but I'm not used to seeing these just be one single piece. Speaking of those, we have one more next to it as well. This one's kind of cool. It's like a nice kind of vibrant green, but same with the other one, it actually doesn't come apart. Let's move those out of the way. Zoom back in at the bottom. Then we have these guys, which I've actually never done before. These are some kind of interesting little uh, cookies, it looks like. So it comes apart into two pieces, obviously. If we put our fingers between to pull it apart. Wait a minute. It doesn't. This is a fake seam. That's really interesting. But the center, if you push it like this actually comes out. Let's see. We can pop that out of there. It's a little bit hard, but I might be able to get it. Mm, and there we go. How cool is that? So normally they would be on like multiple, multiple different pieces, but this one, it has a fake seam line and it kind of just has like this inlay with a specific design to keep the uh, little thing in its little tiny notch right there. Let me pop that back in there like that. There we go. It definitely doesn't fit as well as it did the first time, but uh, I mean, you probably wouldn't really be taking these out anyways normally. And I'm not gonna pull these out, but this is a chocolate one right here. Really looks like chocolate though when you kind of like move the light on it. It really looks like chocolate. Fake seam line as well. We got kind of like a, I don't know, strawberry one right here. Making me hungry. And then right here we have a chocolate mint it almost looks like. Very cool. All right, and now we kind of finished this platter. Let's go ahead and open the next thing of erasers and see what we got in there. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open this one and I'll drag one in individually this time to show you guys. All right, so the first one we have in is a dragonfly, and pardon if anyone is squeamish of bugs. So this is a dragonfly. We zoom in on it. And this actually is mounted to a leaf right here. We have a little peg at the bottom that goes into the, I guess you could say thorax of the, would that be it, of the dragonfly. And then the wings come apart as well. And then from the bottom right here, it also comes apart as well from the wings. So it looks like it's about a four-parter. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Dragonflies are so mysterious. What do you guys think? And then some of these ones, which is really interesting that they decided to do this. Not my favorite choice, but some of these were just sat on top. They don't actually have a peg that goes inside of the leaf. So I guess technically we didn't just get a bug. We got a leaf eraser as well. So that's kind of interesting. I like how they have the details on the back though. Kind of cool. And then we have this little butterfly right here with little interesting designs at the bottom. Looks as though it comes apart on the top. Has a little tiny insert right there for the eyes, specifically only for the eyes, actually. And then two little bottom pegs holding the top and the bottom together. And that one goes right through the wings in order to keep them in place. That's pretty cool. Kind of cute. Worried about that eye, though. 
because I think that that's just like a tiny little, a little like tube that could fall out pretty easily. Let's move this out of the way. And then we have some cute ladybugs right here. So right here we have a orange one and let's actually drag in the other one too. So we have an orange one and a red one. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but when I was a kid, someone said that there is a ladybug and then there is a kind of very, very close looking um, thing to a ladybug, but it's actually a beetle and it's supposed to bite you. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure ladybugs are also beetles. They both look like beetles, but I'm not too sure if there's like a good, nice ladybug and then another one that's not as friendly. I'm not too sure if my mom just said that to me on a whim or not. You know how parents can be. All right. And this guy comes right off the leaf. And it looks as though the actual little tiny wings come off separately. Let's actually pull this guy apart. Actually, no, it's one large piece, so we can actually just get my fingernail under there. That's pretty cool. If you look right there real close, you actually can see that the little pigs, they actually come up and they push through this tiny little section right here in order to be able to make up the dots. Pretty cute. So these are just two-parters. Well, actually, technically, three parters because of the peg that it goes on to. Right there. Pretty cute. And then the same thing with this guy, so we're not gonna take him apart. What do you guys like better, a red ladybug or an orange ladybug? And then if we bring this guy over here, we have another one that's not attached to the leaf. So we have another leaf eraser, but if you notice, there is a little bit of a cutoff right there. So what I'm assuming is if we move this right here, we take this guy off. If we count the spaces, so that's one, two, three, yep. This is where the peg would have been. So if they choose to put the peg in right there, then there's no kind of weird little tiny thing. But if they choose not to put the peg in right here, maybe there's like a little machine that comes down and shaves that off and that's why there's that little mark. Or maybe there's a separate mold for it, who knows? That's kind of interesting nevertheless. So right here we have a little bumblebee, or it could be a wasp, but I think it's a bee. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a bee. So this one, its wings come off like that. Go ahead and zoom in. And then they can also pop back on as well. Kind of cool that they're actually a little bit see-through. And then in the center, it actually comes apart too. We can pull it apart easy. There we go. And then all the little ridges go through on each side in order to make up the design. And then it probably has a pig like the other one going through the eye section in order to make up the little designs right there. Cool little uh, antennas. And then we have this thing right here. I don't know if they just threw that in here to just kind of, I don't know, be funny or not. <laughs> but uh, is this supposed to be a fly? I've never seen a bug that looks like a, it's wearing a Halloween costume before. But same design as the other one, so I'm not going to take it apart. This one definitely is creepier, huh? Oh, and that one also came with a complimentary leaf. And then the last one is a really pretty butterfly like the other one with a complimentary leaf. And the bottom is the same as the other, but I like the wings on this a lot more. You could also interchange these if you wanted to since it's the same design. And we have that little pig for the eyes as well right there. Push that back together cute little antenna and yeah that's pretty much it and uh, that was two packs of erasers it came with quite a few and these are from iWacko and these are all puzzle erasers if you've not caught on yet and uh, I really like these and I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and yeah and welcome back to another gotcha video and of course I don't just have one I have two different gotcha bags and this is kind of from, I wouldn't say it's a retro show, but it's like a, 
2011, I believe, release. It is Disney's Gravity Falls, and I'm a really big fan of this show. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, as an adult who watches cartoons, it really kind of put me back into like the nostalgic, like I want to see what the next episode is kind of thing. It had a really good, uh, a good writing staff, and I think it was really nice and well put together. So let's go ahead and open this up. But first, let's take a look at the packaging. So this is Dipper, which is the main character. We have some other characters on here as well. I can't remember his name. And then we have the main character's cousin. Yeah, I can't remember names. I got a plane flying over. Oh, it's Mabel. How could I forget Mabel? Mabel and Ford Pines, Dipper Pines, and then Seuss. Probably my favorite. I would love to get him. That would be that would be great. And then you can actually kind of clamp these guys together, apparently. We have Wendy. And do we have two different Ford Pines, or that's just the top one? And then, uh, Gronky Stan. Grunkle Stan. I, I can't read. <laughs> but yeah, let's go ahead and open this guy up, and then let's kind of see what we got. All right, let's pull this off. And it's wrapped inside of this as well to make it even more mysterious. And are you guys ready? We got Ford Pines. Actually not my favorite one that I was kind of hoping to get, but it's actually still pretty cool. He's not my least favorite character, but it would have been cool to get uh, Zeus. So here's a zoom in of the character. Pretty decent amount of detailing. It's kind of interesting that those aren't actual glasses. It's just kind of an extension of his flesh to the front side of the glasses rim. And his eyeballs are just painted on. And it's slightly a lighter color, so it's a little off-putting. But that's okay. Standing on some kind of rock. And then if we zoom out a little bit, we can get a good view of the base. And this is where they're supposed to connect with each other. Interesting. Let's go ahead and open the next one. All right. And let's hope that we get a different one. Let's open it up. Oh, yes. This is exactly the one that I wanted. This is Zeus. I am so happy that I got this one. I was really hoping to. How cool is that? I love it when you get the ones that you want. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. It says Sup Dog. Pretty cool design. And I like that they're in these little kind of domes because like you can't really take them off and uh, they'll stay good for a really long time. You're not going to get them all kind of scratched up. Let's see about stacking them, though, because they have these little kind of things on here. Let's zoom in. And that's it. Doesn't fall off. Pretty cool stuff. Very neat and uh, great way to collect things, because you can clamp them together on the side, too. So you can make a stack of them and then maybe just put them against your wall. So that's actually a really good feature. Kind of keeps the clutter away, but also makes it to where you can have a decent amount of... Uh, collectibles. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. What do you guys think? Are you guys a fan of Gravity Falls or was it a little bit too far out of your uh, age span? Or are you the age where Gravity Falls was primarily a thing? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.